Did the blood of the Lord run down?
your journey. But you got to keep climbing all the time. Now the question may arise, how can I keep climbing? Come on down, right. Now let me tell you something, you can't climb in self. No, because self will get this carriage and turn around and go back. But you got to go in the spirit. And that spirit is not other than the Holy Ghost. And, and, and let me tell you something about that. A lot of people think the Holy Ghost is what makes you run through walls and kick through pews. The Holy Ghost makes you love your neighbor when they despitefully use you. The Holy Ghost will allow you to say yes when something terrible has just happened to you. Okay, what are, what are the fruit of the Spirit? It's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And when you got those, then you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. This time we call walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, because this is the command of the Lord.
This is the command of the Lord. I don't know about you, but the world don't like it when we walk in the spirit. Because they don't understand us. A lot of times, our supervisors and our bosses and so forth come in and set us out and we grin at them and, and, and say God bless you and they act like we crazy. Because they really don't understand about us. But if we in the spirit, we can sit there and look at them. But our last number that we're going to do just before Pastor Parker comes to us is entitled, Give It To Me. And that's basically what Jesus tells us daily is to give it to him. I don't care what your problem is. You give it to him. Because there's no secret to what God can do. What he did for your neighbor, he can do the same thing for you. Jesus said you can just give it to him.
We're so glad that you're here. And we're so happy that you brought your Bibles. And we all have been journeying in this book of Acts for quite some time now. Amen. And we're so glad you're able to come and take this journey with us. Acts, the 13th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse and next verse only. It says, Now when Paul and his company yes. loosed from Paphos, they came to Persia and Pamphylia. And look at these scriptures, this verse here. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Those last few words, and John, departed from them, returned to Jerusalem. <laughs> this morning, the preacher who went AWOL. All right, all right. Come on, John. Who went eight wall? I have never been in the armed forces, or I have never been in the reserve, or had any experience as far as the armed services are concerned, whether it be Army, Air Force, Marine. At one time, I considered going into the Air Force, and I changed my mind. The Air Force lost a good man. <laughs> but I do know this: is that I do know this: that when a person in the service leaves without permission That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. or without real orders, he is called AWOL. Yeah, yeah. Absent without leave. That's right. And that's a very serious matter because this soldier is dependent upon to do his particular job in his particular area. Right. And when a soldier just leaves the company and leaves the, the troops, and go where he wants to go, that's detrimental to the army. It's detrimental to the body of Christ, to, to the body of the army. Now, my brothers and sisters, this morning we want to talk about a preacher that went AWOL. Yeah. Amen. I, I never was an army, but I remember I was about 18 years old and I was looking for a job before I went off to college and, and they had here needing 20 men, strong men. And so I went uh, down in Little Rock and lo and behold, I didn't know what kind of job that they had for us and we met at this particular place and uh, we went and they put us in this truck and lo and behold as we drove, we drove to a uh, down by the railroad tracks and there was a big freight car full of watermelons and our job was to take the big heavy watermelons from Hope, put them on the truck and in turn the truck would take them to the different places. It was hot, 100 degree weather and those watermelons got heavier and heavier. And we started around 8 o'clock, and, and the man said, at 10.15, you all can take a break. And at 10.15, I went AWOL. <laughs> I never did come back. Amen. Amen. I went AWOL. Yes, I did. I went AWOL. And I did not even worry about the check. And you know, as I, as I look at workers, and as I look at preachers, uh, we all, those of us who are children of God, and it does not matter what your job may be, whether you may be preacher, you may be a deacon, you may be a Sunday school teacher, a choir member, a minister, you may be on the mission board, you may be a mother in the church, a choir, a youth director, but whatever your job may be, we all are workers for Jesus Christ. We're workers. We're workers. And there are, all, there are different kinds of workers, I tell you, different kinds. There are the slowful workers who are their work. But you have to make them. And there are, there are those kind in, in God's service. And then there are those workers, they'll work if they can never get on time. But once they get there, they'll work. But there are some workers who never are on time. <laughs> and then there are those who work because the reason why I'm working because no one else would do it. And then there are others who work because nobody else will do it. But then there is the other kind of worker that we want to deal with today is that that worker who's very energetic and he starts off working or she starts off working and lo and behold, you look for them, they're working good, they're doing a good deed and look around and lo and behold, they've gone AWOL. Just quit. Or they've gone to church, they're good church attenders and look around and lo and behold, they're gone. And you wonder why? Well, they went AWOL. And you know, there are many people who just simply quit. It don't mean they quit the Lord or they quit Christianity, but they quit 
for different reasons, they just up and quit. And there are some of you today that quit. You've quit. You, you, you've been leaders in your auxiliaries. You've been, you've been in auxiliaries. You've worked. You've gone to church. But for some reason, you have quit. And this morning, we want to talk about the preacher that went AWOL. He quit. And his name was John Mark. Let the church say John Mark. John Mark. And well, who was John Mark? If you, let's turn now to Acts the 11th chapter and the 25th verse. And we might just see uh, who John Mark was. Amen. All right, did you, did you find me? All right. Acts the 12th chapter, the 26th verse says, 12 and 25 says, and this is where we first see John Mark. We want to look at this fellow today. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry, and they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So we see here, the first mention of this preacher was when Paul and Paul and Barnabas went to Jerusalem. And while they were there, they brought this young preacher back to Antioch with them. And then let's look at Acts the 13th chapter and the 5th verse. We see him again in another role. And Acts the 13th chapter and the 5th verse says, And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And so we see here that Barnabas and Paul were on a missionary journey, and they took this young preacher with them, and his job was simply to assist. His job was to help. Barnabas and Paul in whatever job that they had him to do. He was a helper and he did a good job and they needed him. But lo and behold in Acts the 13th chapter and the 13th verse we read these words. And John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. He quit. <laughs> he quit. That's what he did. He, he was a good worker. He was a great help. I'm sure he was enthusiastic. I'm sure he was saved, he was a good assistant, but uh, lo and behold, out of the clear blue sky, the man got the first ship out and went back home. He quit. <laughs> he went in wall. that's what he did. And, 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 and you know, the purpose of this sermon this morning is this, is to encourage those of you who are working for Jesus Christ to encourage you to keep on keeping on. I know sometimes you, you feel like that you want to go AWOL and sometimes you feel like you want to quit but I'm telling you today hold on. And also the purpose of this uh, sermon today is to let the, those of you who have quit to let you know that your job is not over because just like John Mark although he quit he came back and he was a great instrument in the hands of Jesus Christ. Now, the question is today, why did John quit? The Holy Spirit does not say. And St. Luke is the author of, of this book, Acts. And, and uh, I don't mind you taking notes. It's okay. Because I believe every sermon ought to be instructive. And if there's something I say you need to take down, it's okay. It's not a sin to bring a notebook and pencil to, to, on Sunday morning. Let the church say it, man. And so, and so the Holy Spirit does not say why John quit. And so all I can do this morning, just for a few minutes, is to just suppose different reasons why he quit. Well, I believe that the, maybe, maybe Mark quit because he lost heart or he lost courage uh, while he was helping Barnabas and, and, and Saul. He lost courage. Now, while he was there in his hometown of Persia, he was okay. But the Bible says here in verse 13, it says, Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they left Paphos, they came to Persia in Pamphylia. And what happened there was, they said that when you would go into Pamphylia, there would be great mountains before you. And Barnabas and Saul and Mark had to climb those mountains to get to the next stop. And no doubt, Mark began to think, now we got to climb these mountains. And I know it's dangerous, and I know it's going to be hard, and we might run out of food. And I believe that when he thought about the hard times he was going to have, 
he simply lost courage and quit and went back home. And there are many people in the church who have worked and as soon as they smell trouble coming or as soon as they think that something is going to happen to make them look bad, they quit. <laughs> they quit. And you look for them, they look around and say, where's brother so-and-so? He didn't come, he didn't come to me the other night. Where is it? He's going AWOL. He lost heart because he sees he's going to see a confrontation and he quit. Maybe that's the reason John quit. Another reason why that I believe that he probably quit was because he became homesick. Homesick after all, folks, he was just a young preacher. And I forgot to tell you, he was the son of a rich woman by the name of Mary. Mary was a rich woman and she had a big house. And the reason why I know she had a big house was because when Peter was in prison, the, the, the majority, a lot of the church members went to Mary's house to have a prayer meeting in her house. She was a rich woman and more than likely when Mark saw the hard times they were getting ready to have, he contracted a, a disease called homesickness and he wanted to be with mama. <laughs> And you know, I have found out that we would have much better workers today if they were not so concerned about home. And I'm not only just saying just going home, but 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 but, but in a minute, people people who are who have great talent and who could be very energetic for the church, who could be very beneficial to the church, usually in a lot of time they'll say, if it's not the job, they'll say something about home. I, I can't because I home. But I understand charity begins at home and go abroad, but Jesus Christ expects his work to become first. I'm not saying leave the dishes not washed. I'm not saying don't take care of the husband and don't take care of the wife. But when it comes to God's work, God's work must come first. Yeah. And so this, and people at home, you know, a lot of times the only thing that is home is Bill Cosby on Thursday night. A lot of times, the only thing that's at home is the VCR or a comfortable, comfortable couch where you can lay down and recline. But the point I want to make is that we can be so concerned about our earthly home until we forget about preparation for our heavenly home. Sometimes we let friends and acquaintances keep us from serving the Lord the way we want to. Oh, we come in here for a while and we, we say, yes, I thank the Lord and he's been good to me and I'm going to go all the way and then all of a sudden you begin to think about the friends. I wonder what they're doing now. Or well, this time last week. And all of a sudden you say, well, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to see what they're doing, you know. And next thing you know, you are back with the friends and the work of the church is undone. Some of you have quit today because you're homesick and because of your friends and your acquaintances. Why did John Mark quit? Well, maybe, I'll tell you another reason he could have probably could have quit. Because lack of training. I'll say this, you might get mad, but the biggest problem we have in our church today are people who want to do, they want to do, but they're not willing to spend a few months to be trained to know how to do it. Just want to go ahead and do it. I want to do this. I want to do that. But anybody that don't want to be trained will not stay on the job long. Well, I was in the Ramada Inn uh, Friday eating lunch. And they had a meeting in the back with some employees from a company. And these brothers were draftmen. And there was a draftman who was a good draftman. He was a national draftman. And he came in to speak to them on the different techniques of drafting. Now, some of those men had been drafters for years, but they recognized the importance of training. And I believe this, that, 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 that we need training. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. And I mean that John did not have enough training and experience to stay on the job. And I'm going to say this now. I want to challenge all of the workers here. I want to challenge you in the next few months and this year we're going to have some training sessions. We're going to have some special Bible studies for officers. And I challenge you to make your way there. Because if you are not train, you won't stay there. Amen. These ushers back here, they didn't learn how to be ushers just by, they didn't just say, well, I want to be an usher. And then say, go ahead and go to work. They had to have some exercise. They had to learn what their job was. And so I believe that a trained church is a witnessing church. And a trained church is a strong church. And a, strange, a trained church is a progressive church. We need more teaching. But maybe, hold it now, there's something else here that maybe he quit or went AWOL was because... Barnabas lost his position. Somebody said, what you talking about? Well, look, look. 
Look at Saint Luke, uh, Acts the 13th chapter, the first verse. I want you, I'm going to show you something here. And then we're going to move on to our next point. It's very interesting here. The Holy Spirit does not tell us why Mark quit, so we have to speculate. But in John the 13th chapter and the first verse, it calls off the preachers there in Antioch. And whose name was first? Barnabas 13, what it says, Now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers. And who did they name first? Barnabas. And look, the last name they, they named was who? Saul. So more than likely, Barnabas was the leader. Now look at verse 2. It says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, I'm so glad you bought your Bibles, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me who? Barnabas and Saul. The Holy Ghost separated Barnabas first and then Saul. Amen. Barnabas, leader. All right, now look, look, look at verse 9. Verse 9, it says here, all of a sudden, we no longer see Barnabas' name, but we see Saul. It says, then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. And then all of a sudden, we go all the way down to verse 13, and we don't see Barnabas at all. And what it says, now Paul, now when Paul and his companions, what had happened was, Barnabas was the leader at first, but the stronger Paul got. In the ministry, Paul became the leader of the missionary work. And maybe, you see, what I didn't tell you was, John was a cousin of Barnabas. They were cousin relatives, you know. Yeah, I think the best thing that can happen in church is that you forget about who your relatives are when you come to church. And that, that's trouble. That's, that's, that's trouble when, when you can, when you, when you don't long, when, when Uncle Joe is still Uncle Joe in church. It's trouble when Aunt Lucy is Aunt Lucy in church. It's trouble because see, you'll look at her as Aunt Lucy instead of a brother and sister. It's trouble. And I believe when Barnabas lost his position as head of the missionary work, John Mark probably got mad and said, my cousin Barnabas lost his job. And since, he not, since they didn't hire him back, I'm not going back either. I wonder how many people have left, left the church and left positions because one of their relatives were treated badly. They mistreated Uncle Joe, and you know that's family, so you know that's, that's war. But I've come to tell you today that we're all in the same family. And when family comes before your brothers and sisters in the church, when you look at your family instead of your brothers and sisters, you will be headed for division. And then maybe, I tell you really, why he probably left. Because he got discouraged. Let the church say discouraged. Mind of a story. Satan had a rummage sale. I like rummage sales. I like church. And Satan had a rummage sale, a yard sale. And he, he had all of his tools of his trade out. He had lying. and He had envy and had all of his tools. And they were so shiny and bright. And people were passing by to try to buy some of the tools that Satan uses. But there was one tool there that was dirty, well used, it was worn out. And someone said, all of these other tools are very, they're usable, but they're so clean. But this tool here, it seemed like that you've used this one more than any other. And Satan said, yes, that's my number one tool. When I use this, I can usually get a Christian. I can get them to stop working when I use this tool. And they said, what's the name of that tool? He said, this tool's name is discouragement. Yeah. If I can get them discouraged, right. if I can get them upset, if I can cause one of their brothers and sisters to, to say something to them, to make them mad, or to hurt their feelings, I can usually get them. They are quit in a minute. And I wonder how many of you here today have quit your position in church have quit your responsibilities because some other brother and sister upset you. And since you got upset, you just left the whole thing and said, I'm through with it all. They can have it. When you do that, that's nothing but Satan. You see, it's a mighty bad thing. The Bible tells us in Matthew 18, when a brother or sister offend you, you're supposed to go to them. And so we see here, my brothers and sisters, there were many reasons why possibly that Mark left. But the question I want to ask is that, what kind of effect did it have on the missionary work? What happened when he quit, when he left? I'll tell you what happened. Guess what happened? The work did not stop. I'm, I better say that. When he left, I don't know why he left, but all I know is he took the first boat back to Jerusalem. But when he left, Paul and Barnabas kept on preaching. Souls were still saved. Churches were still organized. And the work kept on going. 
God's program is bigger than one man. God's program is bigger than one woman. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how influential you are. The church can do without you if you don't want to work. I know that's right. Now, I'm not saying the church won't be hurt. And I'm not saying the church won't be affected because everybody is important. But what I'm saying is that although the church might be hurt, the work will go on. Give me an example. I, I, can I get a, a bucket of water? I'm going to get a bucket of water right now if you don't mind. I have a bucket of water. I'm going to put it here on the pulpit. And I'm going to stick my hand down in the water. It's in the water now. I wonder, when I take my hand out of this water, I wonder what the water going to do. I wonder if that going to be a big hole. Let's see. I know it's going to be a big hole, but that water can't do without my hand. I, I lo and behold, I take my hand out of the water, and guess what happened? Water just kept on coming to cover it up. You can't tell my hand was ever in there. God's work will go on, regardless of whether you stay or not. His work will go on. And when Mark left, souls were still being saved. Now, but I will say this. Turn to Acts 15. This is the teaching. Acts 15. Although the work still went on, it still had an effect on the missionaries, Barnabas and Paul. Look, Acts 15 chapter, 15th verse, 15th chapter, and the 36th verse. Some of you are looking at this for the first time, so let's look at it very carefully. Although it did not stop the progress of the church, it still had something to do with the fellowship of the church. Because there was a big argument over John Mark leaving. Look here at verse 36. It says here, in verse 36 it says, It says, And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. In other words, what Paul was saying to Barnabas was, Hey Barnabas, we, have, we are through with our missionary journey now, and I have an idea. Let us go back to all of those churches where we went and let us see how they are doing. John had gone, he was, Mark was at home and guess what Barnabas said? Barnabas said in verse 37, uh, uh, Paul, yeah, what about my cousin? <laughs> John. <laughs> I, know, I know he left us a few, few months ago, but you know, he's a pretty good old boy. Why don't you just let him come along with us this time? Verse 37 it says, And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. Although that, Bar that, that John Mark had left them, Barnabas, his cousin, still wanted him to go. And Paul said, No. Oh, they had argued. It was an argument. And I have a surprise for you. Some of you might didn't know. Christian folks argue sometimes. These were men, yes, they were holy, but they were men. And men, they should have settled this in a different way. But they had an argument, and they had a heated argument. And Paul said, I do not want that quitter here with us. No, he left us one time, and he might leave us another time. I don't want him with us. And I tell you, when you quit sometimes, it makes your brothers and sisters doubt. And when another job come up, they're a little funny about giving you. Don't, don't you ever be pegged as a quitter. Because it'll hurt your progress. It'll hurt you getting a job for the Lord. Paul didn't want it. Paul said, in so many words, Paul probably said, now, if he deceived me the first time, it's his fault. But when he deceived me the second time, it's my fault. I don't want him working along with us. No doubt Paul probably said, any man that takes his hands and put it to the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom. I don't want him because he went back home and left us out there by ourselves. No, I don't want him. They had an argument. They had an argument, I tell you. They had an argument, and I guess, guess how they settled it. They never settled it. They got so mad until they split up. Paul left and got a young preacher by the name of Silas, and Paul went somewhere else. And Barnabas said, well, since we can't agree, I'm going to get Mark in the way, and I'm going back down to Cyprus. And they left and went on their own. John Mark caused a split. You didn't know that Paul did that, did you? Yes, he got mad. And they did not make up till many years later. John Mark caused a split. Paul went his way. And Barnabas went his way. Paul said, I don't want him. And Mark and Barnabas said, we got to have him. And they split. Lord have mercy. <laughs> they split. 
And I tell you, who was right? I'm going to leave that to you. Who was right? I don't know. Was, was Barnabas right for wanting Mark to still come with them? Or was Paul right for saying if he quit us the first time, he'll probably do it again? Well, I say it like this. Paul was right. Because I believe that when somebody quit on the job and they never tell you know, there are some people who quit and won't tell anybody. You just look around and they're not there anymore. You have to go to their house and I say, why don't you come? Well, I quit. I let them niggas have that. <laughs> well, you know that's the way we talk. Don't look at me that way. That's the way we talk. And I'm not going to take it back because you know how we talk. I'm going to let them have it all. that Barnabas was right because he was willing to give Mark another chance. Better hear me today. It's all right to discipline somebody, but you need to be willing to give them another chance. Oh, I tell you today, some of you ladies here who learn how to wash dishes, some of you broke a mini dishes trying to learn how to wash those dishes. And I'm sure that when you broke that dish, mama, mama could have told you, don't you wash another dish. I'm sure you would have been happy, but she gave you another chance. <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, you broke the dishes. You broke the dishes, but she gave you another chance. And I need to tell you today, Christians make mistakes. We make mistakes. We fall down sometimes. And we need to learn to love each other and give each other another chance. Is I realize 
that you denied me, but I ain't willing to give you another chance. Into thy 
hands. I commend my spirit. He died. Yes, he died. And Satan, doubt, thought they had Jesus. They thought they had him, but he didn't quit. They nailed him, put him down in the grave, but he didn't quit. He didn't quit. And the reason why I know that he didn't quit, early Sunday morning, he got up, he got up, and he still haven't quit yet. He's standing on the right hand of his father. He haven't quit yet. That same Jesus is coming back again. I know Rabbi. You can't quit. Just hold on. Just don't change the hand. And let him hold on to you. Don't go AWOL. Some of you here today have decided to just drop it down. But this is not your battle. It's the Lord's battle. Jesus will help you. Now, 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 now what I'm saying. Hold on. Stay at your post. Don't let anybody turn you around. Don't let anyone. There's nothing that you and God can handle again. Just like John and those of you who are quit, get on back there. Tell them this out. Get back in the race. And run for Jesus. The door is open right now. This is a chance for someone. This is a chance. This is a chance for someone right now to come to the Lord. This is a chance for someone right now to walk down the aisle. This is your chance. Some of you have quit. Now it's time to re-enlist. You may come by letter, by Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Would you come today? Let us stand. The door is open. I would not let this opportunity pass me by. The door is open. Did you come? Oh, Holy Spirit.
For in due season, ye shall reap if you faint not. Now, minister, we commit the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with all of you, now and forever. 